We have a lot of new juicy information on Modern Warfare 2's DMZ Demilitarized Zone mode, which is of course going to be an extraction-based mode played on the Warzone 2 map, Al Mazra. It's actually going to be a part of the Warzone 2 application itself, launching with Warzone 2, which is going to be releasing soon after the game's release on the 16th of November with Modern Warfare 2 Season 1. In a prior video, I went over all of the official information that we learnt about DMZ from the Call of Duty Next event but we have more to go over and some Warzone 2 information too. First of all though, I want to recommend to you an awesome sponsor right up your alleyway to help you get better at games. Have you ever played a game that you find so difficult that it makes you want to slap the hell out of it like Will Smith? Oh. Have you ever felt the urge to smack your keyboards like that one CSGO player? More importantly, do you need help with growing your social circle? You are maidenless. Unfortunately, that would mean that you'd have to ascend past the point of mortality, which would mean going out and touching grass, but through the darkness shines a light at the end of the tunnel. A light known as epal.gg. epal.gg is here to satisfy all your gamer needs. They provide personal coaching to help you become a master at your favourite but challenging video games, transcend to the child your parents always wanted, need someone to rage with you when you throw your game out of the window, need someone to hold your hand while you run it down, they have it all and much more. So drop by epal.gg and you never have to game alone again. So in terms of DMZ, this is the mode of which I am the most excited and am most anticipating for Modern Warfare 2 because multiplayer, in my opinion, has gotten stale over the years. I think even if Call of Duty were to release the most perfected multiplayer ever, which in my opinion is Black Ops 2's multiplayer, I think even if they were to pull that off again but a more modernized version of it, it just wouldn't hit the same because I feel like there's only so much they can really do with the traditional 6v6 multiplayer. Now, ground war and the larger player count modes I think allow for more innovation but at the end of the day a lot of us Call of Duty fans have been playing for year after year after year and it's gone stale for a lot of us a long time ago. Now there are a bunch of people who have been playing for a long time and still basically play the same game every single year and they still enjoy it a bunch but for me it did start getting stale after Black Ops 3. I've not really been that into Call of Duty's multiplayer for a while and especially with Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer having various different issues such as no traditional red red dots on the minimap, although I do think that Modern Warfare 2's beta has been a lot more enjoyable than I found Modern Warfare 2019's beta. I think the game is a massive step up, the maps are a lot better, less cluttered, and visually the game looks a lot better and has a more arcadey tint to it. They're going for a less realistic visual, which I'm glad about because I feel like the hyper focus on realism in Modern Warfare 2019 hindered that game for me, as I prefer the more arcadey Call of Duty games, which Treyarch typically produce. After all, it is is an arcade shooter, it isn't a war simulator. So yeah, I'm not too hyped for Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer, I probably won't play it that much, especially because Infinity Ward seem to be doubling down on the feedback it given from the beta, they don't seem to be making any changes, and even if they were to make all of these changes, as he said, I think that multiplayer for me has gotten a bit stale. I am mainly a Zombies player, it's what I primarily cover on the channel, but unfortunately we're not going to see another Zombies installment for another couple or so years until Call of Duty. 2024 Trex next game. I am really looking forward to the campaign though. I really enjoyed Modern Warfare 2019's campaign and this sequel I think will be even better than Modern Warfare 2019's campaign. There's a lot of missions which have leaked. What I'm most excited for is how they're going to tackle the Simon Ghost Riley story and how it's going to mirror the original Modern Warfare 2 campaign of which he was betrayed by General Shepard. I don't think the same events are going to play out this time. Whether similar events play out where Shepard is still a bad guy and tries tries to get the better of Task Force 141 but fails this time and Ghost maybe kills Shepard instead, we'll have to wait and see what actually ends up happening. But I am also looking forward to Warzone 2, but personally for me, I'm not the biggest fan of Battle Royale. I think it has been a bit overplayed and I do think it gets repetitive. Zombies is my bread and butter, but even then I don't play it a ton. I kind of just play it whenever a new map comes out and I'm really interested in the storyline and bring all the latest videos, etc. to you. So that brings me to DMZ. This is by far what I am the most excited for and I think there is a lot of weight on DMZ's shoulder to be successful because we're not having zombies this year. This is going to be the mode that a lot of zombies fans will try out but the thing is this mode isn't really a zombies-esque mode unlike prior zombies clones like Infinite Warfare Zombies, Exo Zombies, Extinction. Those modes were still in the same breath of Treyarch Zombies but DMZ isn't. DMZ is still catering 
something to Warzone fans, really, since it is played on the Warzone map. It's all played on this big map. And a lot of the systems are going to be very, very similar to Warzone. Like I said, I went over in a prior video all of the official information that was revealed, which I will have a link to down in this video's description. Previously, from the Ghost of Hope, we learned that DMZ is going to feature a marketplace where you can buy items that can be bought and traded. You are able to earn skins, blueprints, and more from DMZ that are usable across multiplayer and Warzone 2. So it seems like there's going to be a lot of exclusive stuff that you can get just by playing DMZ, and it is going to be really competitive, and I'm glad that it's going to be free to play with Warzone 2. That is what this mode needed. It needed to be free to play. If it wasn't free to play, this game would have just had its legs cut off before it even got a chance to stand, just as what happened with Blackout in Black Ops 4. This mode is catered to a free to play audience. The Ghost of Hope previously also let us know about contracts in the mode featuring ones such as safe, elimination, and hostage, and you are able to interact with buy stations, UAV towers, surface to air missile strikes, gas stations, and intel. Of course, the mode is pretty much going to be just like Warzone, where you'll fly in on the AC-130, parachute down, then you are going to complete various different objectives and mini little side things across the map. As you compete against various different squads or solo, you can loot items across the map and then you bring all of that loot that you collect throughout the game into the next game. Just like in Escape from Tarkov, this is Call of Duty's take on Escape from Tarkov and escape mode similar to it. Of course, Warzone 2 is going to be featuring a new Strongholds feature which are going to be these objectives around the map where there's going to be AI and you'll have to defeat the AI. There's actually various different tiers of AI with the Super Stronghold, which is Tier 3, the Hero Stronghold Tier 2, and the Basic Stronghold Tier 1. Strongholds occupy buildings across Almazra and you can engage with them to get better loadouts and items. Find location of the Black Site to get even better loot. Of course, we've seen them in Warzone 2, but I think they're going to work differently inside of DMZ and be a bit more elaborate. We have actually gotten a bunch of new leaks from COD Spoils. I'm not going to go through all of the strings that have been provided by him, but it does seem like Shadow Company is going to be a big focus of DMZ storyline, as it does seem like there's a bunch of exclusive Shadow Company skins you are able to unlock in DMZ, just in DMZ. But the main villain of DMZ is going to be Alcatala, so I'm wondering if Shadow Company will actually send us into the game and they're going to be the ones commanding us as paid contractors. We will have to wait and see. As you know, DMZ will reportedly follow the post-launch storyline of Modern Warfare 2 following on from the campaign. Both Spec Ops and DMZ will be the post-launch story. I'm assuming Spec Ops will be set after the campaign and then DMZ will be set either in unison with Spec Ops or after the events of Spec Ops. But apparently you are actually going to be able to call in a nuke on DMZ, which I'm assuming will probably end the game. The strings reference someone and a nuke. Get to the helo to get the hell out of here before it blows. 10 minute warning, nuclear signature detected. 5 minute warning, nuclear warhead inbound. I'm wondering if you have to extract the map before the nuke goes off. Is this something that will happen every game? I don't think so. Of course, we're going to be able to get killstreaks in DMZ. We're not sure how many will be accessible, whether it is all of them or not. And I am interested to see how the perk system plays into DMZ. It does seem like this new perk system they have in Modern Warfare for two's multiplayer is catered for DMZ. It seems like as you play and loot throughout the DMZ game, which will probably be longer games, you will slowly get your perks. It hasn't really worked that well in Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer. Of course, they've sped up the time to unlock them a bunch, but I think that's the issue with Modern Warfare 2 and even Modern Warfare 2019. Modern Warfare 2019, they wanted to have all of the modes feel similar, so a lot of the features that were best for Warzone made their way into the multiplayer experience too, and hindered that experience. And likewise in Modern Warfare 2, it seems like a lot of the systems from DMZ have made their way into Warzone 2 and Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer when they don't really work as well in those modes. I will leave a link to all of the other strings that were provided. We are able to collect intel within DMZ, which will serve just like the intel we could collect in Warzone 1 back when we used to have the dams, and that'll be how the storyline is told. There's various different documents and stuff you can collect. It seems like you need to collect keys around the map to be able to access various different offices and rooms. It does seem like the Gulag is also going to be in DMZ, so it seems like you will just have a one life, then you'll be able to drop back in with the Gulag. It does seem like you need a key to be able to escape the Gulag. All of the vehicles from Warzone 2 are also going to be in DMZ, which are going to be a bunch of fun since there's a bunch of new mechanics 
tracks where you can shoot whilst driving and jump from vehicle to vehicle, lots of cool stuff. You are able to get a gunship, there are radiation zones and radiation blockers, and there's AI at various different sections on the map, I don't think just at the strongholds. We also have all of the missions and objectives in DMZ, once again provided by COD Spoils. Charlie and Teller has posted an article on this which I will leave a link to down in this video's description, but it seems like players will be completing objectives by extracting various items such as enemy grunt weapons and certain amounts of cash in one match. Cash is going to be a primary system of a DMZ, more akin to what they wanted to be in the original Warzone but it ended up getting changed before launch, if you guys remember the old leaks before Warzone initially launched. So you will have to be looking for cash as currency, as it's going to be the primary way to buy gear and various other items. A mission into the DMZ cannot be considered successful without extracting sufficient resources. So like I said earlier, you hop into the game just like in Warzone, but it's different now, so you will actually collect a bunch of loot that you can then bring into further games. But you will only successfully extract these resources if you manage to exfil on a helicopter. It seems like these games will just be ongoing with different teams dropping in. Fill your backpack before you exfil to maximise your efficiency. There are missions that are very reminiscent of the multiplayer mode challenges, with players needing to achieve a certain amount of headshots slash kills with specific weapon classes on either other operators or grunts. The objectives revolve around needing to acquire intel about how Alcatella is arming its grunts, bring back some of their weapons so that you are able to analyse them. You have to extract X amount of enemy grunt weapons. You can capture SAM sites. Alcatella has set up several surface-to-air missile sites in DMZ. There are frequently transport planes flying ahead. SAM sites can shoot them down, allowing you to recover their supplies. Capture X amount of SAM sites. You can extract X amount of cash in one match. We are low on coin because of several consecutive botched operations by a fellow soldiers. We need a lump sum urgently for an upcoming mission. Extract X amount of cash in one match. Extract a hell sum. Uncle Sam is looking to do some research on the weapons being distributed throughout Saba. Acquire and extract a hailstorm shotgun and we can use it to gain some goodwill with the feds. There's a rumour the hailstorm can be purchased by specific buy stations. Kill a boss and extract their weapon cases. So there is going to be bosses on DMZ. Hyped about that. We've received intel that the chemist has acquired a weapon case containing valuable rare weapons. Find a hard drive and upload it in order to track him down. Acquire his weapon case by any means necessary. Kill a boss and extract their weapon case. Extract with a full backpack. A mission into the DMZ cannot be considered successful without extracting sufficient resources. Fill your backpack before you exfil for maximum efficiency. Alcatella is planning to transport weapons using civilian vehicles. Drive nearby vehicles until their tanks are empty to sabotage Alcatella's plans. Empty X amount of enemy vehicles gas. Extract with X amount of different lethals or tacticals. Kill X amount of grunts in Hydro using a shotgun. Travel to Hydro and get up close to the Alcatella infantry so we can observe their tactics, dispatch them with a shotgun, you can acquire one in a buy station or in an enemy supply cache. Travel to Hydro X amount of times, kill X amount of riot shield grunts, enemy strongholds are often guarded by well equipped grunts with riot shields, if you can outflank them you'll have easy access to the loot they're protecting. Kill X amount of special forces, heavily armoured grunts will infill if you cause enough trouble in the DMZ, we need intel on their combat capabilities, get their attention and terminate them. Extract X amount of liquor bottles, before Saba was evacuated a famous collector of fine liquors lived there. Looters have stolen and relocated most of his collection all around Saba, find a few bottles and bring them back, they are highly valuable. Kill X amount of grunts at long range, good marksmen can take out enemies before they are ever detected. Prove your marksmanship by eliminating some of Alcatella grunts from long range. Kill X amount of grunts in oil fields using a sniper rifle, the oil fields are a critical point of interest for our operation. Wipe out the grunts there but don't get too close, acquire a sniper rifle at a buy station or somewhere else and use it to eliminate the hostile. Styles. Travel to oil field X amount of times. Kill X amount of operators with an assault rifle. Prove that you have the skills to be a helpful asset to us. Acquire an assault rifle and use it to terminate other operators. Kill X amount of operators. We need to increase our influence in Saba. Eliminate any operators you find to strengthen our foothold. Kill X amount of operators in Quarry. Command wants you to get a foothold in Quarry, but informants have told us about rampant activity from other factions. Clear out some of their operators so we can move in. Kill X amount of operators with an SMG. Weapons found in the DMZ are unreliable. Verify the killing potential of a recovered SMG by testing it on hostile operators. Kill X amount of grunts with headshots using a pistol. Travel to X amount of different points of interest in one match. We need you to familiarise yourself with the points of interest in Saba to increase our operational efficiency. Travel to as many points of interest as you can and scope out the area. Wipe out X amount of squads. Extract X amount of operator dog tags. We need proof of enemy faction presence in the DMZ to get approval for higher troop deployments. Tech will run a background check on the operator and pay you a lump sum for each dog tag extracted. Complete X amount of elimination contracts, Alcatella has stationed several high value targets in Saba, intercept
intercept their communications to track them down and eliminate them. Complete X amount of hunt contracts, you can intercept enemy communications in order to find the location of hostile faction operators. Use this intel to eliminate enemy squads. Hack X amount of UAV towers, Alcatella has deployed UAV towers at many points of interest around the DMZ. These towers provide critical intel on the surrounding areas, hack them so we can gain an informational advantage. Enter X amount of different vehicle types in one match, destroy X amount of vehicles, transportation options are limited in cyber, destroy vehicles to immobilize the enemy. So that is all of the challenges for DMZ and that's everything I wanted to discuss in today's video. Thank you for watching and uh, bye.